Here we're going to consider an extension of the particle in a 1D box model. In the 1D box we've considered so far, the potential at either end of the box goes to infinity. What will happen if instead of making the potential go to infinity, let's make it go to some finite value v. So here are the conditions for the, uh, the setup for the Schrodinger equation. H psi equal e psi, where h now has um, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. But now the potential energy is not zero inside the box and infinite outside the box. In fact, at one uh, edge of the box, the potential goes to some constant value v. And let's uh, look at the uh, implications of that new potential well and see what happens. All right, so let's uh, set up the system. Uh, pre previously, for particle in the box, if we plot the potential, a function of one-dimensional box, as a function of distance, this is where the box starts, this is where it ends, zero to a. These values here at the edges of the box go up to infinity. Now what we're going to do is, instead of having the, say, the left edge go up to infinity, we're going to make the le left edge go to some value, call it, say, v0. And we're going to reference that to zero, the potential inside the box, the constant potential inside the box will be zero and this still goes up to infinity. All right, so this is a different system. We'll have to write a different Schrodinger equation for it. Um, let's just uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, the Schrodinger equation, again, is h psi equal e psi, and we want to solve the Schrodinger equation for this uh, potential here where it doesn't go to infinity on the left-hand side. And solving Schrodinger equation means getting the wave functions and their corresponding energies. Now over here, uh, we said that um, the potential, or sorry, the uh, Hamiltonian was just the kinetic energy operator uh, because the potential we set to zero inside. Well, same way here, inside the box, we'll have just the kinetic energy operator because the potential is zero. Outside the box, here we have a uh, potential not equal to zero and we'll have to include that in the Hamiltonian so this will be the potential energy V. Okay so let's uh, look at the two regions here's inside the box and here's outside the box. On the inside of the box we know how to uh, solve that the uh, solution the wave function corresponding to the particle inside the box is just say uh, a1 e to the minus i k x plus a2 e to the i k x. That's the general solution k x. <laughs> Where did that g come from? <clears throat> That's the general solution uh, for the second order differential equation embodied in the Schrodinger equation. Now outside the box, what is the wave function? Well, outside the box, the potential, or sorry, the Schrodinger equation uh, has this Schrodinger operator h. That is equal to the kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x plus this constant potential v0. Okay. Here inside the box potential is 0, but outside the box it's not. It doesn't depend on x, but it is a constant term. So if we now put this operator in for the Schrodinger equation, we have minus h bar squared over 2m d by dx second derivative plus v0, that value of the potential independent of x, psi is equal to e psi. So let's re, uh, rewrite this equation so we can solve it um, using uh, our understanding of differential equations. So we can rewrite that as second derivative with respect to x of the wave function. That's equal to minus 2m over h bar squared e minus v0 times psi. So we know from our study of differential equations we have the general differential equation dy dx squared 
That's equal to, say, k squared y. There are two different kinds of solution depending upon what k squared was. If k squared was, say, less than zero, or if k squared were greater than zero. k squared less than zero implied that the solution uh, y was, say, a e to the minus i kx plus b e to the i kx. If k squared was greater than zero, then y was equal to a e to the minus kx plus b e to the kx. So remember, if that's uh, less than zero, when you take the square root, you have to take out the i. All right, so let's take a look here. Well, minus 2m over h bar squared. This will be equal to k squared. Um, e minus v is zero. Now this term, m is positive, h bar squared is positive, so then 2 is positive. So put the negative sign there, this is less than zero. So this term will either be uh, k squared, will either be less than zero or greater than zero, depending upon what term this is. Now the interesting uh, um, case that we want to consider in quantum mechanics is where the energy of the particle is less than the potential energy barrier. So classically, if you don't have enough energy to get over the barrier, classically you're constrained to be in this box. You go just back and forth. You can't get out of it. But what we'll find quantum mechanically is that even though you don't have enough energy to get over the barrier, nonetheless you can appear here in the barrier. So the interesting case is where E is less than V0. So when E is less than V0, this term will be less than 0 for E less than V0. So in general the whole term is positive. So again, this is for outside the barrier, or outside the, uh, outside the box. <laughs> um, we'll have the differential equation not contain, or the um, differential equation leading to a uh, positive value of k squared, in which case this is the solution. So just to summarize, inside the barrier, we have the uh, potential, or sorry, the um, wave function to be equal to a1 e to the minus i k um, x plus b1 e to the i k x. Outside the barrier, we have the wave function to be, we'll call this a2 e to the kx minus kx plus b2 e to the kx. So there's the wave function inside the box and outside the box. Now what we're going to do is to put some constraints on the wave function. In other words, put some boundary conditions on it. Uh, let's um, say, uh, go back to our picture here. Inside the box, we uh, if we go over here to the right hand side, so we want the wave function inside the box to go to zero when x is equal to a. Okay, so that when x equals a, the wave function inside the box has to equal zero. And we'll just put in what that is. That's a1 e to the minus i k a plus b1 e to the i k a. That plus that has to equal zero. Now let's look at on the other side when x equals zero. All right. So here, when x is equal to zero, you have a wave function inside the box. You also have at the boundary a wave function just on the other side of the box. So you have a wave function outside the box. Since wave functions have to be continuous, that means that the wave function just inside the box has to equal the wave function just outside the box. In other words, at x equals zero, the wave function inside has to equal the wave function outside. So the wave function inside zero has to equal the wave function outside of zero. Also, if we look at the wave function, um, well, let's just actually say what this says. It says that a1 e to the minus i k zero. Oh, all these are going to be zero, so that'll just be one. So just let me, I don't really want to write all that stuff. So when um, x equal zero, 
we have this constraint implies that we have a1 plus b1 equal a2 plus b2. All right, but let's take a look at this wave function outside the box. We want another condition that as the, um, sorry, as x goes to minus infinity, so in other words, as you go out here, you want the wave function to go to zero. In other words, you want this wave function to be well behaved. This is the wave function outside the box when it goes to minus infinity. Well, let's see. Wave function outside the box, x is going to be negative. If x is negative, this will be e to the positive number, and that number will go to infinity. So the wave function will go to infinity if we keep this term. The only reason to get rid of this term, the only way to get rid of this term, is to make a, a2 equal to zero. All right, and then x is negative, so this term will behave nicely if x goes to infinity, e to the minus infinity goes to uh, zero. Okay, so what we've done here by apl applying these constraints is to put limits on what the coefficients are in front of these terms in the wave function for inside the box and outside the box. The sum of these two coefficients have to be this of inside the box has to be that of the outside the box, but we know that a2 is 0. And inside the box, on the right-hand side, where the potential goes to infinity, this is a constraint. So I'll just put dot, 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 so you can, uh, in more uh, detail, you can solve this, probably look at an advanced physical chemistry book, or probably it's uh, on the internet. But just let me go here uh, to the uh, bottom line here. What I'm going to plot here is the wave function. Again, here it goes to infinity. Here we're going from 0 to a. Here is v0, and here is 0. All right, so it's going to start here at 0, because we want need the wave function to go to 0, because out here it's 0. And what you find is that you go up here. You don't have to go to 0 here. When you hit the barrier, the wave function decays. It decays exponentially to 0. It decays exponentially to zero because uh, now we put this term a2 uh, to be zero. So outside the box, the wave function will just go e to the uh, minus x. x is negative, and this will decay to zero exponentially. Now that's something you wouldn't expect. So remember what we the uh, system we had here was that e was less than v zero. In other words, the energy trying to get out of the, uh, the energy of the particle is less than the particle barrier. But quantum mechanics says that even though the energy is less than the uh, barrier to the particle, nonetheless there's a finite chance of finding the particle within the barrier. Let's modify this system a little bit. Instead of having this potential be constant all the way out to minus infinity, let's make this a finite width barrier. So we'll just draw that here. And now the barrier will be a finite width. This again is zero. We're plotting potential this way. This is distance. We're starting at zero, going at a. This is infinity. Now what you have is the particle going up here. It starts to decay through here. And now the wave function is not zero on the other side of the, of, of the barrier. The other side of the barrier. That's interesting. That means that even though the energy of the particle is not enough to surmount this barrier, Nonetheless, it could go through the barrier and appear on the other side. Whoa, that's not something you would predict classically, but quantum mechanically it's true. That's called tunneling. Quantum mechanical tunneling, where you go through a barrier even though you don't have enough energy to go up and over the barrier. You perhaps heard of a scanning tunneling microscope that uh, uses the uh, quantum mechanical phenomenon of tunneling to get, quote, pictures of atoms on surfaces. Uh, you have essentially electrons flowing from the tip of the um, microscope, as microscope probe, tip of the probe, into the, the um, what you're going to image. And to get that electron across that barrier, it doesn't have enough energy to go across the barrier, but nonetheless it goes through the barrier uh, through the quantum mechanical effect of tunneling. So there you have it. Interesting effect.